So glad you're with us uh, from New York each weekday. AFA Today, AFR Talk is the place that you find that, and uh, we are glad to be with you, uh, whether it is um, in the middle of your day or uh, you hear this again later in the evening or, or wherever you, uh, where you're, wherever you're at. We're always glad to be with you. Kevin McCullough is my name. My phone number is 888-589-8840, 888-589-8840. And uh, we're talking about uh, a new law that the governor there, uh, the governor of Tennessee, signed making them the first state in the nation to pass a law that criminalizes uh, activity or behavior that the woman may enter into prior to the birth of her child that harms her child. So if she's taking drugs and she is pregnant, particularly later in the pregnancy, and the child comes out addicted to drugs, then this law would allow authorities to say, you can't do that. Uh, we're going to uh, we're going to we're going to prosecute you. Um, everyone on the planet told the governor not to sign this bill. The White House told him not to. Uh, the National Drug Control Policy Center told him not to. Uh, every major medical association told him not to. Same medical associations that all voted in favor of the Affordable Care Act and uh, endorsed uh, Barack Obama and uh, have changed their definition on uh, the health of, uh, of homosexual behavior and uh, no longer sees a problem with uh, the, the moral objections to abortion. Those same medical associations. Those are the ones that have said, no, this is a bad idea to make this law uh, law. Uh, they have, all these groups have said, no, don't sign that law. They are making the argument that it is, it is too punitive and it is too dangerous. Uh, and if, they, if he signs this law, that women are going to be hurt. And some civil rights groups are arguing that women of color are going to be disproportionately hurt, you know, disproportionately worse, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just asking you your thoughts, the raw idea, and I will tell you, my bride, and this this is the, this does not matter where we are, what country we're in, what where where we happen to be at the time. When she sees a pregnant mom engaging in behavior, uh, and we don't we don't socialize with drug users, so we've never seen that. Uh, but she has seen. Well, actually, that's not true. I think we were at a public event once where someone. Uh, was smoking a joint, and you could tell by the the smoke in the air that it wasn't cigarette smoke. And w when she turned around, she saw that it was um, a pregnant woman, uh, and she and she had it, and she's she's had it when she's when we've been at uh, eateries and so forth, and she sees women drinking alcohol that are pregnant. She's like, how can they do that to their child? You want you want to blow your brains out on drugs? You want to snort your nose off your face? You want to get uh, blasted and waste your weekend being um, rewired? That's your issue. But when you start doing it to your child, now it now you're you're going beyond just your choice. You're impacting the the development and the very life and livelihood of that baby. So uh, that's the thinking behind the bill. Let me ask you this: Why did everybody oppose this bill? Why did all the medical groups oppose this bill? Don't don't medical groups want the best medical outcome for the for the most amount of people? Um, isn't it a no brainer that the White House would say, "Hey, uh, we don't want women becoming drug addicts, especially while they're pregnant." So yeah, don't. What what's the White House's? Why why do they need to oppose this bill? I, I'm trying to figure out the the objections, though some have been listed disproportionate, uh, you know, um, enforcement, et cetera, et cetera. But there's not, they, nobody's made an argument that, like, this bill should not be passed because it will hurt the woman this way or this way. In fact, the passing of the bill just makes the woman's life potentially better. 888-589-8840. Let's see what you have to say about it. Let's start with Rachel in Texas. Hello, Rachel. Welcome. You're on with Kevin McCullough. Hi, Kevin. God bless you, and thank you for your ministry. Thank you. I totally agree with the governor in Tennessee. I think if we had more politicians who had a backbone as strong as his, I think our country would be a lot better off. And I think we should all pray for his protection and that we get more politicians that are willing to stand up for what's right and stop 
making excuses for all these things that they want to do because of their own free will, but what is right and wrong in the eyes of God. And that, I yeah. think, is what we need to straighten this country out. So God bless that governor. Yeah, it's a good uh, it's a good action he's taken, and he, you're right, he's done it in uh, very very courageous circumstances because the whole world's against him. Uh, let's go to uh, Julie in Kentucky. Hi, Julie. Welcome. You're on with Kevin McCullough. Glad you're here. Thank you. I completely and totally agree. My daughter is now 17 years old, and when I was pregnant with her, I took allergy shots, and the doctor told me that. Um, to not put anything into my body or into my mouth that I did not want my child to take. Mm. And it just amazes me how people are coming out against the governor saying that he shouldn't have signed this bill. All it is is they're saying that it's going to hurt women. Well, why can't we help the women see their worth, that they don't have to, that there's help, that we can help them? Yeah. I like that idea. But let me ask you this, Julie. How far would you extend the law? Would you extend it to uh, over-the-counter medications? Hmm. What about riding a motorcycle? You know, what about um, uh, the, there's uh, the point being and I'm not I'm not trying. I like the bill. Yeah. I want that. But yeah. here's the thing. When my bride was pregnant, she stayed home. She didn't go anywhere. She didn't want to. Number one. And after a while, she felt too uncomfortable to be seen in pregnant. She just didn't desire to be out there. But it is it is. Um, I do I do suppose that there is a case that could be made that that over overreach could could easily happen here. And I'm curious where where they draw the line on on what they consider to be, you know, abuse and harmful in the um, in the process. Well, people should be asked to use their common sense. However, the problem with that is that everybody has lost any their anymore. common sense <laughs> because right. they're looking to the government to take care of them. All right. Well, I appreciate the uh, I appreciate the erstwhile try you gave it at answering a very tough question. Let's go to uh, Amanda in Michigan. Hi, Amanda. Welcome. You're on with Kevin McCullough. Glad you're here. Hi, Kevin. Thank you for taking my call. Sure thing. Um, I think that the bill is great. I agree with anything that will protect an unborn child. Um, as far as the overreach, I think that if we can if we constrain it to only illegal drugs, perhaps that would stop overreach so she can drink as much alcohol as she wants because it's legal well that's the problem if you start using i mean I, I wouldn't want the government to and in some states and in some states amanda in colorado you got legal right, pot now exactly yeah so i, I mean i think that anything that is extremely harmful such as alcohol drugs those types of things acor- should be... according to who according to who i mean well, cigarettes I... are legal but, you know, you right. take too much cold medicine, you might do something. And I'm really not trying to find uh, problems with it. No. But I, I think it, that I, I would we even dare, and I, and I don't know that we have the, the, the backbone to do this, but would we even dare to say that, no, a, a pregnant woman shouldn't use uh, antihistamines? And we're gonna we're gonna take a stand on that. I don't know. I don't know if we've got the uh, I don't know if we have the stomach to be able to enforce something uh, that strongly. Uh, because it begins uh, the obvious cases of heroin and cocaine and the hardcore illegal stuff that becomes pretty clear. But you can damage a child real easily by drinking too much and by smoking weed. And in in some states now we've legalized weed because we've said, well, you know, people are going to do it anyway. We may as well tax it and get revenue from it, which always works so poorly in the outcomes of society. Well, gambling, they're going to gamble anyway. We at least should get a piece of it for the government and try to do. So. Every state that has legalized gambling, they have uh, bigger challenges as it relates to the problems and the effects of addiction and everything else. I mean, it is it, the end all of government is can I tax it? Can I can I get a piece of it in some way? At the end of the day, I'm not sure that's how we should be living I'm pretty sure that we should be thinking about things pretty much from a 180 degree uh viewpoint than that not what can we tax and take uh what can we how can we live our lives in such a way that they're good for us uh 888-589-8840 and i'm not sure that i want government to control that so i've worked myself into a complete corner on this because i like this law especially 
if they're gonna if they're gonna hurt kids. I'm just I have a big soft spot in my heart for children and the welfare of children. 888-589-8840. Dave in Florida. Hi, Dave. Welcome. You're you're on with Kevin McCullough. Glad you're here. No, yeah, thank you. I've actually got just about uh, just three little things. One, the reason everybody's up in arms is pretty simple. We unfortunately live in a society and that is now run by people in Washington that are in there that tell you that nobody has any right to punish you for anything you do. This law requires you to take responsibility for your actions, yep. and we are living in a society where we have the White House and other government officials say, you don't have to take responsibility for your actions, because if you did, then maybe we'd have to, too. And it's and gra- it works out great for their benefit, because they can offer more government dependency in exchange for irresponsibility. Exactly, and the good thing and the bad thing for them, too, is this governor doing this shows the rest of the United States, the governors, that... Oh, man, he realized that the Constitution says that they have the right to govern themselves as they see fit according to their populace, apart from what the White House or opinion tells them to. And he yep. realized that it makes them look real bad. Oh, it makes D.C. look uh, incompetent and, and, uh, and worse yet, uh, uh, you know, just not even, not even up for it. And, and this is the challenge. And the, here's the thing. This administration doesn't like being cha- embarrassed in front of people. Uh, the the Bundy scan uh, situation demonstrated that they didn't like being shown up, and I'm not defending Bundy's uh, racist remarks. What I'm saying is is that this is an administration that gets the hairs on the back of their neck standing straight up when someone defies them. They're just not used to it. They're not comfortable with it, and yet the state should be doing that to D.C. regularly. Hey, D.C., go take a hike. This is Texas or Tennessee or Mississippi or New York or whatever. Uh, they should, on a regular basis, be defending the rights of their states uh, in in superior preference to the uh, ideas that are coming from uh, Washington. Uh, let's go to uh, Clarence in Alabama. Hi, Clarence. Welcome. Glad you're with us. Well, thank you um, for everything that you do, Kevin. Kevin, thank you for taking my call. Sure. Um, definitely agree with the bill. This is actually runs kind of parallel to a report I did in school. Um, about, uh, you know, food stamps and doing drug tests and things to be able to qualify for that and got a big, almost, I was the only one in class that was for it. But um, this is something that definitely should be a law. I mean, just as, you know, if you're doing drugs, you shouldn't receive benefits to buy food for your family or children, the same thing. And um, so he's probably, I mean, I'm sure the governor's thinking on the same lines that I was when I, you know, did my report, um, which by the way, I ended up making a a minus on even though everybody, nice. everybody you know, every, even though everybody was against it, but I backed it up with facts. Um, nice. And the governor did as well. So, and a lot of it was Bible verses. So, um, but anyway, I just wanted to put my two cents in. And again, I appreciate you using your talents for doing everything that you do, sir. Thank you. Well, we try. Thank you, Clarence. Pray for us. Uh, let's go to Ann in Arkansas. Ann, you're next with Calvin McCullough. Hi. Hi. Um, in regards to this law with um, pregnant mothers taking drugs while they're pregnant, I was a foster care mom for a lot of years, and I worked mm. with medically fragile infants, and many of them were uh, drug-addicted babies. Um, they were born addicted with meth, marijuana. Um, even my son that I adopted had that problem, and I saw firsthand how horrible the effects are on drugs on these babies. Now, if parents gave drugs to their kids that were out walking around they'd be in jail you know charged with drug abuse and to me i always felt personally you know if you're going to take drugs while you're pregnant you you know you ought to, it should be illegal you should be in jail fine whatever because it, it is abuse there's no question that it's abuse and i go back to the uh, illustration i tried to put forward with uh, one of our previous callers in uh you know if a if a mom is doing lines of coke on the counter and she takes a little bit of that dust and she and she sprinkles it on the on the cupcake frosting and then gives turns around and gives the cupcake to the kid, she's in essence doing the same thing uh, uh, when the child's in her. So, well, that's not a one to one comparison because she's proactively choosing to uh, give the child the coke. How is that not exactly the same thing? I mean, unless she just doesn't understand at all that her diet is also feeding the child, that what's in her bloodstream runs through their bloodstream, unless she has no clue of that whatsoever. And how many women honestly have no clue that that's how it works? I mean, 
I've talked to so many moms who say, yeah, when I eat such and such, the baby's happy. I eat a banana and the baby's like, yeah, moving around. I eat uh, steak and he's not so happy. And, you know, is it, uh, uh. how does the mom know that? Uh, the, the baby's responding to what they're receiving. Well, I, I, again, unless you're just really, really, really have no clue whatsoever. And then, you know, maybe there's a defense that you could make that, you know, I was, I was born in a garage and never allowed to leave home and, you know, uh, only stayed in this limited uh, understanding my entire time. But if that's the case, you've got bigger problems in that person's life. That Those, that, those people need help because of that uh, degree of, of um, uh, sheltering or kidnapping or whatever it is <laughs> that would allow that. I think the average person understands what a mom eats gets into her baby's life, too. And this law is simply trying to say, moms, be good moms. When you're pregnant, you're already a mother. You're already a mom when you're pregnant. Be a good mom when you're pregnant. Uh, And that's ultimately why I like the law. It pushes us towards a moral outcome that honors God. may not be my right, but that's what I think. Uh, It is uh, so good to have you with us each weekday. Uh, There's lots more uh, news to get to and continued discussion of the National Day of Prayer throughout the afternoon here on uh, AFA and AFR Talk, and I hope that you will stay with us. Brian Fisher, Focal Point, is up next. So uh, make way for the Silver Fox right after news. And I'm Kevin McCullough. We'll see you for the Friday edition tomorrow here on AFR Talk.